Hey, this is Adobe Illustrator tutorial number two with Robert University. Here's what we did last time. Um, what we did was we created some letter forms. We changed them. Um, we created outlines and got rid of all, all the font stuff. Yeah, all the font file uh, rubbish. And we um, uh, created true vector curves. If we go up here to view and outline, you can see that uh, converted Robert University to true vector curves, but this tagline down here still remains as a font file. Now I'm quite happy with how this looks. We're looking at a um, center on center uh, logo type, and if you can see while I, uh, if I select, uh, uh, if I uh, go to object and ungroup everything, I can just select the tagline on its own, and you can see that these six boxes are aligned perfectly, yes, with the center line I created. Okay, but look, it's not really centered, is it? I mean, this is the thing. This is mechanics versus the um, versus visual design, really. Even though mathematically all of these things should be centered and everything should be perfect, if you see how it's worked out. The fact that this bit of the Y, this uh, kind of leg of the Y kicks up visually, it makes it appear that this tagline is not really centered. So even though it's mathematically centered, what I want to do is visually center it. So using my arrow keys, I'm going to move it over a little bit. And that looks much better to me. Now, I'm quite happy with this. I'm quite happy with how the words look. Um, Adobe Illustrator is capitalized everything else is in sentence structure i haven't chosen to put a full stop i'm going to go to type and i'm going to uh, get rid of the uh, font uh, uh, coding and hit create outlines yes now i can't go back and re-edit this text but if i go to view now and outline everything is are uh, all, all these letter forms have been converted from font files, the true vector curves. So there we are. OK, so I'm going to go back to the normal view. All right, we're not worrying about color right now. We'll do that in another video. <coughs> so um, here we are, and we've got our letter forms, and uh, we're doing this logo type. If I zoom out, You can see that we're trying to conform to the sketches that we created earlier. I played around with the text. I thought that maybe large and small caps stacked and centered might look good. It does. All right. I tried a different version up here, upper and lower case. That looks kind of good, too. I haven't quite abandoned that yet. We'll keep that up there for now. What we're going to do now is we're going to work with true vector curves, and we're going to try and create our little symbol down here the mortar board or symbol of university education, perhaps with RU as a, a, uh, in the same format that uh, Adobe software products um, uh, brand, uh, brand their individual uh, uh, software uh, uh, programs. Yeah, we might still do that. We're just going to work with true vector um, curves right now. So a true vector curve, all right, the simplest way to get into it is this. This tool, five down from the top, the rectangle tool, if you click on it, you can kind of left click and drag and you can make a, uh, a rectangle, okay? And you can deselect it and there it is. Now, if you look down here, my default color settings are set on black, that's this box to the upper left. And my outline or stroke color is um, nil or none right now, and that's fine. Okay, we'll get to that. We'll get to that later. All right. So we we made a little box, yeah. But what if we wanted to make a box that was perfectly square? I mean, the Adobe Illustrator squares uh, uh, logos are square, and we're trying to kind of imitate that a little bit. So, I mean, if you click on the rectangle tool and you'll notice that all sorts of things happen differently if you depress certain keyboard commands at the same time for instance if you hit shift and the 
a rectangle tool, you get a perfect square. And that's what we're looking for. So there it is. OK, we get a perfect square. So we were thinking about perhaps putting the initials R U into the um, into this perfect square. And in the Adobe Illustrator fonts, you see we were using a sans serif font, but we don't want to imitate it exactly. So maybe we want to just go and try and see what RU actually looks like. RU, Robert University, it's of a certain relevance. Maybe, maybe not that much. Let's just try it, okay? So I'm going to click. I get this lorem ipsum thing. I I come up here to the select tool. It selects it. Yes, I click on it again. I make it larger. OK, I change the typeface to the typeface we're using, which is. Um, uh, Franklin Gothic uh, heavy. There it is. I double click on it. I, I uh, select it like you would in a Word document. I type a capital R and a lowercase u, OK. Doesn't really mean anything, does it, R, U? But let's just work with it anyway, OK? Because I can make some sort of point here. Let's zoom in on this R, U, and I'm going to show you how basic vector curves work. OK, so I've got R, U. We know, we know uh, from the last tutorial that this is in a font format. So the first thing we want to do is go to type, and create outlines and get rid of that. OK, they're both connected here still because we have to go to object and ungroup. OK, fine. Now we not can move these around. OK. But I want them to have a common baseline, so I'm going to hit control Z and keep that common baseline. If you go up to view. And hit outline, you can see the true vector curves now. OK, that's great. Now watch this. Let's just zoom in on this R. OK. Whoa. All right. Where are you? I'm going to go back to the select tool. What you got here, the U is a true vector curve. All right. It's one continuous line set out by uh, with nodes at the corners, anchor points, straight lines here, curves here, etc. One single uh, line. But here in the capital R, we've actually got two paths. We've got the outline and we've got the counter or the bit that's knocked out of the R so you can see through it. OK, if we wanted to say remove that, um, for whatever reason, and we don't really want to remove it, but it's a perfect time to show you this. I'm going to click on that R and you can see all the different nodes. Yes, you can see straight lines connect some, curved lines connect some nodes, right? Etc. Now, if I wanted to come up here to object and came down to come down to compound path, I can click release. Deselect everything and all of a sudden this bit can be moved. I'm going to hit control Z again, OK? That means um, um, what I have done is I've changed this from a compound path, which is the interlinked um, uh, event of two paths being locked together. And I've changed it into two vector curves. If I wanted to maintain that counter in the R, say I wanted to change that and for instance, uh, change the size of something. I could now select the out, outer path by hitting shift, go to object, go to compound path and say make. Yes, and if I hit uh, view and preview, you can see that what I've got is a compound path that's been changed. So you can release compound paths in the way that I've just showed you. No, I, I didn't really want to do that. So I'm going to hit control Z, 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 and there it is back to its normal bit. OK. OK, now. What you're looking for in vector art is nice, clean vector outlines. OK, now let's just say that I wanted to somehow make this U connect with this R, yeah? 
So right now what we've got is overlapping paths. And if you viewed it in a normal thing, it looks perfectly fine. That's OK. But if we keep these, if, if we wanted to use RU in this way, um, and if we left it as two separate objects, it can um, make things difficult in the future if we want to do other things with this unit. OK, so I'm going to switch back to view and outline so you can see the true outlines. Now, if I click on one path and the other path, the U, right? And I come up here to window and I click on Pathfinder, yes, which has appeared down here just out of view. With both of those uh, vector paths selected, I can join them by clicking on Pathfinder Unite. And watch what happens in this little intersection between the U and the R when I do this. It becomes one vector pathway, do you see? But it's compound because this bit of the R is still a second vector path. So if you wanted to create um, interesting or, or seamlessly um, clean, proper vector artwork what you want to use is the pathfinder tool okay now there's all sorts of options here and we'll get to this again later so you might want to check this out and this can be done these can be used with any clean vector path it can be used with rectangles or ellipses or polygons or stars etc but what you're always shooting for is the cleanest vector pathways that you can possibly um, maintain all right okay so i'm going to go back i don't really want to connect that the r and the u i want them to be separate so if i put the if i want to change that spacing between the r and the u i do it now i'm not that hopeful about this resolution right about this about using the r and the u for some reason it seems close but it it's not really the uh, Adobe Illustrator font, so our audience might not connect the fact that I'm using an RU and it's supposed to, to sort of um, uh, suggest another uh, uh, Adobe package, yeah? Okay. Let me zoom out. If I hit the Alt key, my Zoom tool turns to a minus and I can zoom out by clicking. Yeah, OK, so let's just say I wanted to put that RU inside of a perfect square to suggest a Adobe Illustrator software package. And let's go to proper view to have a look at this. If I wanted to change those letters into white, um, um, I, I need to bring out the swatches uh, panel. Yeah. And that can be found under view. <laughs> or I'm sorry, under a window. Swatches, very important, OK? I bring this over here. You can see that Illustrator gives you a set of default swatches. Now, if I have the RU highlighted and I click on white, you can see it turns white. And you can also see that my default color over here is turned white. So I'm going to leave the swatches panel open for a while. All right, so I've got RU and it looks a little tight, so I'm going to move the U over a bit. I'm going to make the R and the U as large as I can. OK, so if you look at the. We've got a design decision to make here, OK? In Franklin Gothic uh, Extra Bold, R and U works OK in this square, but it doesn't. It's not really the same typeface as Adobe uses in its logos. OK, that's a design decision. Uh, do I try and maintain the typeface that I've established with Robert University, or do I 
try and have a very direct and literal imitation of the Adobe Illustrator um, <clears throat> branding package. OK, I, I choose this. All right. Now, if you go into uh, view and you uh, uh, win uh, view and you. Um, go to outline. You can see that it looks pretty sound. It's all right. Let's just group that all together. So I'm going to marquee around everything with my select tool. I'm going to hit object and group. OK. OK, fine. Now, what if I wanted to get that perspective that I was talking about? In my notes and sketches. You see, the idea was was to create this symbol to combine, combine certain ideas, the kind of angles of a university graduation hat or mortar board, the idea of the RU being in there to suggest Adobe Illustrator, and perhaps instead of that tassel that hangs from the mortar board, we might make a um, <clears throat> some sort of a ribbon with a uh, uh, perhaps a, a seal that has that suggests. Uh, number one or high quality or whatever. That's what we're trying to combine. So that's that's the point I'm trying to make here. Let's try and create that thing. Now, I may get close or I may not get close, but this is how you would do that kind of thing. I've grouped all this together so it's acting as one object. OK, all right. If I want to, to change this into a diamond, I would click on object and transform and here's where you get all your your uh, um all of your possibilities to change proportions of things to rotate things yes to uh, uh and that's what we'd like to do i could grab i could grab the corner here and when my cursor turns into a curvy tool i could try and rotate it like that but it won't be exact all right what I want to do is get a perfect diamond shape, and that means rotating the object 45 degrees. So I'm going to say 45 and hit OK, and it's gone the wrong direction. So I'm going to hit, it always goes the wrong direction. So what I'm going to do is go back on that, transform it, rotate, and hit the minus 45 this time, and it, it's in the right direction. All right, so if I wanted to sort of squash that now, I could do so like this. So now I have more of that mortar board shape, don't I? And I've got my RU in there and it's looking quite good, actually. Don't mind that one bit. It is the right proportions of a university graduation hat. Yes. And now what I have to do is add my my um, uh, tassel, but instead of a tassel, we're using um, we're using uh, like a quality ribbon, a ribbon like you'd be awarded at a at a at a show for the the best um, the best uh, farm animal <laughs> or whatever. Yes, okay. So let's try and create this ribbon by. Uh, holding down on the rectangle tool and uh, moving down to the star tool and uh, making a star, all right? So if you just left click and drag, oh, you get a star. Okay, that's great. Well, that's not what, really what we want, is it? So instead of that, I'm going to double click on that. And I get to set how many points in my star. So five is not enough. So let's try 15, just like a gold ribbon might be, or a seal or something, and hit OK. And we get that, yes? OK, that, that's all right. Um, those, those points still go quite deeply into our, our object. It's not exactly what I'm looking for. Let's try it again. Let's try 30. That's more like it, isn't it? OK. So there's our ribbon idea. And right now <clears throat> there's it's filled with white, so we can't quite see it. So let's let's fill it with black. OK. All right. 
want that to be kind of small. All right. Now, how do we how do we make that that fabric bit that kind of hangs down from a ribbon, the tails of the ribbon? Okay. To do that, we're going to need some guidelines. Now, look, you see these light blue diet guidelines. You you can hardly see them, and they're really quite infuriating, aren't they? So uh, I like them to be quite a bit darker. If you want to change the basic settings in your Adobe Illustrator interface, it's interesting. If you want to change the basic settings in your Adobe Illustrator interface, you come up to Edit, <clears throat> down to Preferences. And you'll see that you can change just about everything in your interface. So I want to change the color of my guides. If you want to change how the units in your rulers are, are spaced, and I don't mind having these. These must be millimeters. It's fine with me. But I really want to change my guide color. So I click on that, yeah? And right now they're cyan, which is quite a difficult color to see. I want them to be um, this darker blue. So I'm going to hit OK. All right. All right. And OK at the bottom. You see they're much darker now. All right. So let's set up some guidelines. Let's move over some guidelines here. Yeah. All right. And let's set the bottom margin. OK, and maybe that's a bit too long. Let's do a shorter one. And I also want to make a. Um, a, uh, uh, a V in the bottom of my in the bottom of my guidelines. Now you can see there's another vector path there that uh, is invisible, but I'm going to get rid of that now. All right, so. Let's just map out how we're going to create this ribbon. OK. Now what I really need to do. Is come in here. And make a center point between these two lines. Now that looks pretty good, doesn't it? All right. Shall I show you how a really good trick about how to find the center of uh, <clears throat> of a space you've created in Illustrator? OK, here's a nice trick for you. Take the square tool, make a box. Yeah, OK, let's make it black. OK, come up to your select tool and copy it. Hit Control C and if you hit Control F, you will get a perfect copy of anything you've copied directly on top of the last one that you made. So I'm going to hit Control F. Now there's two boxes exactly the same size, one on top of each other. I'm going to click on the top and using my arrow keys, spread them. Leave the tiniest gap between them. OK, so if I want to find the perfect center between a certain space, what I want to do is bring these boxes over to this space, make them fit immediately or exactly into that space. Zoom in. And you can see that the guideline that I've created is not quite centered. So I'm going to come up here to view and guides and unlock guides, hit my select tool and move that guide. So it's perfectly centered. And I can even use uh, the arrow tools to do that. OK, so that's much better. So now I can get rid of my spacer boxes. And know that I have a perfectly spaced center line there. So I'm going to zoom out now. If I hit Alt, my magnifying glass turns to a minus. Now, I'm going to put another guideline here. So check this out. I'm going to use the pen tool now to create this little um, 
this little banner, this little ribbon that, that that works with a rosette. OK, and this is a perfect use of the pen tool. If you click on that. You see that there's a tiny little X that will lock directly into these intersections. You click once. You click again. You click down here. Down here, here. And here. OK. Great. And that didn't do anything that I wanted to do because I've chosen the wrong pen tool. This is the curvy pen tool. <laughs> okay. right, I'm going to select that one. Great. And then delete this one. Right. And what I also did was um, delete my uh, guidelines because I hadn't locked them. So I'm going to have to go back and go to view. Guides. Lock guides. Then I can delete the curves that I didn't want. So if you want to create curvy curves, that's the one. I want straight lines, so this is the one. All right. Click, click, click. And this is why I created this other uh, guideline, so I can make a perfectly centered little V. Now watch what happens when I get close to my to my original um, node that I placed, you see a little zero appear at the base of the pen tool. That means you're close enough where if you left click, you will create a solid curve. Yes, and there I've done it. I'm going to click the pen tool and I'm going to click black and there we go. All right. OK, so I'm not so sure about my rosette. Although it's perfectly centered now. I'm going to zoom out. I think it could be refined. Certainly. It doesn't seem to be in the same style. As the mortar board. OK, so my idea is kind of getting there, but not really getting there. OK, um, let me show you something else about uh, strokes. OK, and then we'll wrap this video up in this case all right so we're getting closer we're getting closer if we zoom out these things all take time i kind of have this little symbol that seemed like a good idea over in my notes yes that combines <clears throat> the idea of your university education uh adobe illustrators branding and uh, uh a um a rosette or a ribbon that kind of means quality that's also doubling as a tassel on the university uh, hat or mortar board. Now, obviously, it's too large. I'm not sure about that rosette. It doesn't look that great. I'm going to make it small. It's looking very bad now. OK, so my idea. Right, well, that's not so bad, but it's not right. Anyway, let me just group it all together. And hit control G and say, well, where am I going to put that? Could it be over here? Maybe Could it be here. Does it work with the text? Could it be over here. Don't know. We're just working on things and we're trying to take our raw ideas that we conceived of before we ever got into the program about how to combine these three ideas about university, yes, university level, quality of 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 these um, of this these tutorials, the fact that they're about Adobe Illustrator. We're trying to combine those ideas. So we're getting closer and closer and closer. Not that seems a bit contrived to me, and it doesn't seem to be quite right. But it's OK for now. Now let me show you some other things that you can do with basic vector shapes. OK, let's let's just make another rectangle here. All right, if I come over to the color swatch and. I try and make this white instead of black, yeah? OK, well, you can't see it. Let's make it a, a very light gray. You can see that there's no 
although there's a line, a vector path that encloses this box, it doesn't have a certain color or anything like that. If you wanted to add a stroke, all right, that's that's what Adobe Illustrator calls an outline. I could click on this, click on the outline color box that comes to the forefront. Yes, we get these um, we get these uh, color match system that that's uh, we'll talk about later. I'm going to get rid of that box. I want to use these flat swatches. And if I say red, for instance, OK, now we have a red outline. OK, that's because that you can see that right here. We've got a gray center and a red outline. OK, how do you uh, control how thick that outline is? All right, well. If you're looking for tools, they're either under view or window. OK, it's hard to tell which are which. Here's stroke, yeah. Another new window pops up, teamed with the transparency window, which I'll show you in a while. Now check out what happens. I've got a one point path here in red surrounding a gray box. If I wanted to make that path thicker, let's make, say we want to make it eight points. Yes, has to be selected, of course. Look how thick it is, okay? It's still just a thickness around that original vector path, but check it out how thick it is. Now, this is the problem with strokes, okay? And this is why I recommend against them. Because watch what happens when you change the size of this rectangle. If I hit shift and grab the corner and make it smaller, proportionately, the stroke stays at eight points, no matter how, how, how large or small that rectangle is. And that can be quite awful when you're resizing artwork that you've used, uh, that, you've, that you've defined with strokes, because something might look perfect at the size of a, uh, an A4 letter size page. But when you reduce that artwork to the size of your thumbnail, the strokes stay in their original point size. and make your artwork almost unreadable sometimes. So in strokes are fine for some rare things, yes? But if you really want to create an outline around a vector object, I'll show you how to do it. This is the proper way to do it. I'm going to uh, say no color on the stroke right now, and that's this little white box with the slash across it, yes? No color, so now we have no stroke, okay? Now, if I wanted to create an outline, a proper vector clean outline, I would go up to object, okay? And uh, path, and um, look at all these options you have here, okay? What we're talking about is offset path, and look, uh, the default settings come up with this amount of millimeters. The miter is how the corner is. Yeah, uh, that's usually irrelevant. Let's just say that's the exact outline I want. I hit OK. OK, now what you've got, if you go into um, view. Oh, goodness, view. An outline. What you've got are two proper lines, okay? And if you click on these, they can be treated separately. So if I click on the out one, outline, outside one and make it red, and go to view and preview, I've made the stroke red, which is a mistake. I have to make that um, no color. If I click on the fill color, and click on the outline outside path and make that red. You can see now I have the exact same thing that I had before, but I'm not using strokes. I'm using outline paths, and this is by far a better way to do things. You see it's actually two squares. The first square is gray, it's on top. The second square is red, okay? So check out what happens now when I make this smaller. If I hit shift and make it smaller, the outline path 
stays in the correct proportion. So you can resize everything and maintain the proportion of your uh, of colors that surround other colors. And that's quite important, okay? So I think that's enough for now. You've learned a little bit about vector paths. We've had a good look at how we might construct uh, a symbol, right? Using the most basic vector properties. And if I was happier with this, I would say it was finished, but I, I think it needs to be refined. So what I'm going to do in the next video is experiment with different things and uh, show you how to refine your work as well as moving on to uh, a deeper understanding of color and composition. So we'll end this video now. Through the first two videos, you've learned the most basic things about uh, vector artwork. You've learned about typography and how to change font files into true vector files by creating outlines. You've learned how to, to use the pathfinder to connect objects. You've learned how to use these simple vector tools of rectangles and stars and even the pen tool in its, in its most primitive way. So uh, what I want you to do is go through there and maybe practice some bit, uh, some, some stuff, yeah? Try and create a symbol that is a comprehensive idea that combines different ideas that gets your point across. I'm not at all happy with how that looks right now, but it's got potential, I think. And you've learned the most basic things about Illustrator. So in the next video, we'll go a bit further, okay?